Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Eddie and welcome to King's Court. And as you know, we are here to talk some basketball business and a few events that have gone on since our last meeting. So let's get, on, let's get down to it, shall we? First of all, let's talk about that Hawks victory against the Bucks in Milwaukee. Third time in a row, the Hawks win the first game in their, in their series. It's crazy because uh, it's been at the opponent's arena each time. Typically, you would assume the home team would take care of home court. And it's crazy because they've all, they've been the five seats, so they always have the uh, that underdog, uh, you know, narrative. The Knicks really gave Trey Young some trouble. So did the Sixers, but you know, it's Trey's fault, Trey Young's fault for the, his theatrics, like I've said before. And in Milwaukee, again, with his not a shimmy, I will say, what he did to the Milwaukee Bucks team was not a shimmy for him to have a wide open three pointer. That wasn't a shimmy. Let's just get that out the way. But let's get down to the game. The Hawks. They look like they're just having fun out there. They feel like they're not even supposed to be this far into the playoffs. And anyone that would tell you otherwise, well, they were probably betting in like, I guess a sort of just a long shot that they were going to be making it this far. Or maybe they're just a crazy Hawks fan and you know, it's just worked out for them. The Hawks are legit. I never thought I would say it. I thought they would have been eliminated in the last round, but they took care of business against the number one seed. And here they go against the three seeded Bucks. Now, here's what I have for the Bucks. I believe they have the stronger defense. Certainly they have the uh the uh the more complete team I would say just because they've They've got more players that have played together over the success of the Bucks than the Hawks have. I mean, the Hawks just got Danilo Gallinari, what was it, last year? Uh, Lou Williams just showed up this year through a trade for the Clippers to get uh, Rajon Rondo. Damn. I'm sure, I'm sure Clippers are, are regretting that decision, but I digress. The Hawks just seem to be fighting everything. John Collins is doing the dirty work down low. Trey Young has no fear whatsoever in his heart. He loves the spotlight. And the Bucks, in typical fashion, they keep shying away in the spotlight. Now, I don't think, in my eyes, Giannis had a bad game. I don't think Chris Middleton had a bad game. I just think defensively their intensity wasn't there throughout the game uh yeah so what the Hawks were just kind of out hustling the Bucks in so many aspects like Drew Holiday or Bobby Portis not closing out on Trey Young after that pick as Shaq would say that was not a pick I, don't, uh, I guess I'll just leave it up to whatever you guys say about it but let's just, let's just say he shook Drew Holiday off. Drew Holiday did not run back to guard him. And Bobby Portis did not run up to contest the, the open shot. So, you just gotta wonder, why aren't the Bucks treating this series... I, I, for sure it's just game one, so I'm just blowing this out of proportion. We're just exaggerating here. But you would think they would have some sense of urgency in trying to guard it, especially since, you know, it's time that they reached the NBA Finals. They should have been there since the year they got eliminated by the Raptors. They certainly had, I think, a better team at the time. Last year, obviously, Ben Simmons was out, but you would think that the Bucks would have taken care of business by now. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's just too crazy for me to fathom the Bucks not giving more effort in this series and this far into the playoffs 
especially after beating the Nets, maybe they think the 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 Hawks aren't as good as the Nets, so they're trying to play it sort of uh, safe, or they're not too scared. But hey, you give this Hawks team some room to to shoot, some confidence. There is no doubt in my mind they could steal the series again because the Hawks shouldn't be. They shouldn't have made it this far. But props to them on being here. Now let's just move on to the Clippers, shall we? Of course, we got some things to get down to for this series. Not good news. Chris Paul is cleared to play Game Three, and although he is a superstar, so many people think that he's just gonna be unreliable in his first game back because that's typically what injuries do uh players are shaky on their return it it, it's certainly a possibility especially given chris paul's age at 35 uh it's it's likely that he could have cold legs a cold shot and uh he might not have the best basketball IQ tonight, but you know, it's still Chris Paul, the point god. I think he'll still do some work in some way, shape, or form, because that's what he does. The Clippers, obviously, no one has, at least anyway, in the Clipper nation. We don't have any doubt that the Clippers won't back, uh, won't, won't bring this back to make it a good series. There is no doubt in my mind that the Clippers can bounce back because look, it took a 40 point triple double from Booker and a career high uh, for Cameron Payne in two losses for the Clippers that were close up until the end. Now, these things don't happen often. 40 point triple doubles and a breakout a uh, game from a role player these are big deals and the Clippers lost in a fashion where something incredible in a historical aspect had to happen if that doesn't say the Clippers have a chance to win tonight and they're still in good shape I don't know what to tell you if you don't believe that because something about the playoffs Incredible things, yes, they happen. I mean, come on, us Clipper fans, we witnessed Terrence Mann have a 39 point game. How many of us really believe that he's gonna come back and do it again? We would love it, but is it likely? I don't think so, but uh, it's certainly a possibility. It's these type of things that keep me in a good mood and in a positive attitude going into tonight's game. These big things have to happen for the Clippers to lose by one. And what was the other game? I already forgot it, but I know it wasn't a blowout. But hey, if the Clippers click, and I know I emphasize this too much on my Twitter. I know I said this too many times on other videos, but it's very likely that the Clippers could bounce back and take the series. Don't count out your Clippers. They're, they, these guys, even after the, even during their post-game interview, after Game Two, they held they held their heads high and they are still playing and acting like a family. No fingers, no sense of frustration. These guys are calm, cool, collective, and they just can't wait to play again. Hopefully everyone is going to have a good game tonight. I know it's only been 36 hours since the last game, but that's what the league gave us, right? Now, let's get into some basketball world news. Jay Williams, I don't know how many of you guys caught his tweet about uh, Emek Ok. ok. I really don't want to butcher his name, but respectably so. I know his first name is Ime. He got hired by the Boston Celtics. And of course, he's a man of color. He's a black person. And he has his uh, position secured. Jay Williams tweets about it saying that he's the first Boston Celtics 
coach of color and then he goes back on his word and says that his account was hacked few things to say about that Jay Williams nobody hacked into your account secondly how many times do people get their accounts hacked in any platform and tweet a more recent headline of their uh, business industry whatever job your job is being a basketball analyst how how do you be, how do you think we will believe that you, your account was hacked and that hacker is gonna tweet about the latest news nah man here here's what happened you didn't want to open own up to your horrible misleading misguided tweet so you called it a hack and well you didn't want to know to own up to it even though there was a uh, doc rivers former coach of the boston celtics casey jones way before my time but i was just told today that he was a coach for the boston celtics again a man of color Bill Russell, he also has been a Celtics head coach. It was an awfully misguided tweet by you. You did not do your research, and it's embarrassing, especially in the case that you had a a basketball career in the NBA. I don't know, man. I think you should have just owned up to it. Your own ignorance got the best of you. And that is why I think you should have just owned up to it. So now you are made fun of in Twitter world. Oh man, ESPN, you 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 did something. <sighs> These experts, right? You hire experts, ESPN, to talk basketball. Anyway, I hope ESPN finds this in some way, shape, or form. And you know, I know a thing or two about basketball. Give me a call, ESPN. Hopefully, cross fingers. But anyway, I said all I've, I all I've needed to say. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And tell your friends about this YouTube channel. Of course, uh, like I've said, it's still small. I'm still going to grow this. I'm still going to be uploading every day, every weekday for as long as I can. And hopefully I land a gig somewhere. And uh, hopefully you guys all follow me wherever I go. That is all i got to say about today. Nothing else. Hopefully Clippers win tonight. I think they will. There's no way they're getting swept by the Suns. So I'll just call it there. Uh, yep, that's all I got. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out. Thanks for listening.